Welcome to Talking Heavy. We're back and we got lots to talk about. My usual partner in crime, James Lilly. He's currently not here. He's in training for his European featherweight title fight, Buddha 24 in the LC2 on November the 4th. But we've got a great replacement with us to talk about all the events that's just happened. It's MC Rick. You're right. Thanks for coming on, Rick. Uh, anytime, anytime. Great to have you here. Perfect to have you here, really, because this past Saturday, it was a huge Cage Warriors event in Newport, headlined by a friend of ours, um, Lou Long. Yep, yep. Uh, with a lot of Welsh talent on. So let's get straight into that. We'll start off with the main event, which was Lou versus Soldic. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a late replacement for Lou. But it's, um, I don't think it's out of place to say everybody expected Lou to pull the, the win off. Yeah. It turned out a massive upset. Um, quite shocking upset, really, uh, with with Lou being knocked out um, in 40 seconds with a vicious head kick. Let's talk about that. Um, obviously, you're very close to Lou. Couldn't have been easy to watch. So what's the fallout and what was your reaction to it? Well, um, I was watching it on Fight Pass on my phone, uh, a, a boxing show uh, in Murphy the, the night, and I made sure I, 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 I found the time to watch on my phone. Few people gathered round, and it was quite shocking. Uh, the head kick went up and put him down. And when something like that happens to someone so close to you, you you question, you look, and you think, did that just happen? And it was getting. He just got caught. That's all. I mean, he could probably fight that guy nine out of ten times and uh, and win nine out of ten times. But just that happens that one time he got caught with a a nasty head kick. And they uh, put him down and um, was getting the sea. Yeah, I, I've watched it back a few times. And my initial first, I, I, was, I was in the house watching it. And my initial thought, as the fight started, Soldic threw two right hands that landed on Lou. Um, and I thought, when, when he landed the first one, I thought, oh, that, that, that shocked Lou a little. Lou went for the takedown. So I thought, he's definitely, he's definitely hurt him a little there. He caught Lou with another one, and I thought, oh. Lou went for a third takedown, and that's when the head kick come. And it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a knockdown where he thought, oh, he, be, he, he might look out. It was a face plant. Yeah. One, one, not one punch, one kick KO, which are the worst ones. One thing I will say is, no offence to the referee, you know, he, he, he recognised straight away and jumped in. But Soldic, I've seen a lot of, of comments on social media as well. From Lou's mother especially. I, I haven't seen Lou's mother's uh, comments, but from from like journalists and professional and, and fellow fighters, yeah. how Soldic almost climbed around the ref to punch Lou while Lou's he was on the floor one, yeah. as well. Yeah, which in all fairness to Lou, he hasn't come out and complained about. He's been, obviously, understandably, he's been quite quiet yeah. um, on social media, but... You, I'm assuming you've spoken to Lou. Yeah, I, I went out with Lou for a couple of pints the day after his fight, and he didn't. He was just his jolly self, you know. He had a couple of drinks, was a good, good crowd of nice people around. He didn't really speak about the after shot. Everybody else had something to say about it. He just got on with it. Um, I know on social media, his mother who posts as Lou's mum on Twitter. <laughs> She's had a, a pops directly at Soldic. So, um, Soldic, if you're watching, watch your back, because uh, Beth Purcells is after you, mate. <laughs> um, for Lou, there was a lot of talk, and there has been for a while. Why hasn't he been signed up to the UFC yet? He's been chased. He's in the, ranked the number one welterweight in Britain, outside of the UFC. Lou was at that level. He hasn't been signed up, uh, and it was sort of everyone was under the assumption that Lou takes this because Carl Amamuso has been yeah. hiding yeah. Um, for the for the title fight. So it was under everyone was under the impression that if Lou wins this fight, which we expect him to do, then the UFC will come knocking, and away he goes. But you obviously you know your MMA. Where does Lou go from here? He just got to get back in the win column uh, and build up a couple of wins again. I mean, Jack Marshman, before he got signed to the UFC, about three fights before, he, 
he went to uh, the Middle East and fought for Cage Warriors, and he got knocked out quite badly, but it didn't stop him. A couple of, couple of wins later, he's in the UFC, and, and he's doing quite well. Um, next week, he's got his fourth fight in the UFC. So it's just how he recovers from this, if he can get back in the win column. As you said, he's outside the UFC, he's the number one ranked welterweight in Britain. That doesn't change because he lost to uh, Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian, German bloc. <laughs> you know, that's got, you know, nothing to do with it. So if he can get back in that winning column, um, he's still, f okay, it's a bit further on, two or three wins away. There's no doubt it's set him back. Yeah. Considerably, because he was on the cusp of the UFC, everyone, like, everyone assumes. Um, there are fights out there for him, but like you say with Jack, he had that knockout loss, he come back, and he beat guys like Ali Arish, who are massively respected and yeah. some of the top guys in, in Europe. So Lou needs to get, again, needs to get a name. But do you think he'd be looking for the Soldic rematch? No, I, I, I can't see it immediately, to be fair. Um, it's just see what, what happens next, what Cage Warriors get next for him. I'd like to see him fight a U. Okay, if I, I'd like to see him on the the Bama roster, not like a crossover kind of thing where uh, they loan him to Bama because I think he could beat every single every single one of the Bama welterweights. No disrespect for him, but I think Lou is on another level. This is, this is a big, not I wouldn't say big because you've got guys like John Phillips who have won Bama world titles, but there is sort of a gulf in class. Or oh, and well, I'd say Juarez is thought more highly. I'd say than, in the welterweight division. Uh, it's more than any other division um, where I think Lou if he went over to Bama in in a representing Cage Warriors on the Bama card he really could do some damage he, there's no one on that Bama roster in, in the welterweight division who could hold a candle to Lou has anything like that happened where Cage Warriors fighters have gone over to Bama no <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new idea it's, it's pretty much you know you're you either you either work for Coronation Street or you work for EastEnders. <laughs> yeah. You, unless you're Kathy Kathy Beale, you don't go over to Coronation Street. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how it is. You you choose one or the other. You you will obviously know better better than most. Is Lou currently? I know I know Lou's management is something to do with Cage Warriors, but has yeah. he actually got a contract with Cage Warriors? Or? Yeah, he's got a promotional contract and a management contract with. <laughs> the management company ran through uh, Cage Warriors, I think it's called Intensify or Intensity Management, but it's all run by the same people. I'll throw it out there, just get back in the win column. Budo, Liu, Biali Irish. It could be a European title there, get straight back in the win column, and away he goes again. Yeah. Just put that out there. That's a big fight. I mean, you know, a win over Irish did wonders for John Phillips. He's a... He's a tough fight. He's a hard fight. He's a big banana skin as well. Well, you can wrestle. You can, can wrestle, wrestle with the best of them. And yeah. I've seen him knock people out cold. Uh, where, because he's such a wrestler, the first thing you do when you fight a wrestler, you you protect and you take down. So your hands are down there. He 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 shoots in. You drop your hands. He comes up with that overhand right. You're out cold. And that's what I've seen him do many a time. Um, if you notice in the fight with Marshman. He caught Marshman quite a lot because he was anticipating the takedown. Mm. Um, he eventually got the takedown and, and, and Jack Iltine... Yeah, well, there was a bit of controversy with that at, at the time where Irish said he didn't tap. Yeah. But, well, I, but then they're in the replay, I was there, yeah, in the replays, you could see a clear tap. I was in the, I was in the ring emceeing and we were all just waiting there, shaky and that, and even shaky was like, yeah, I don't think he tapped. And then as soon as it came up on the screen, it was like... There it is, guys. He's tapped. The yeah. referee was even like, "Oh, I messed up." Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but like, try. you know, you can't, you can't do this motion and say you're trying to inflict damage on someone. That's a tap in anyone's book. For me, that would be a great, great fight for Lou. Yeah. Just to get back on the horse. Yeah. Because it's a very winnable fight for Lou. I see Lou as a, although Irish is one of the top boys in in Europe. Yeah. I see Lou as as above above Irish's level, so it should. But then again, nothing in MMA, that's what makes it so exciting. Nothing's guaranteed, because if it was, it everybody, everybody would have bet on Lou winning on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> so there's, um, it's, it's set, like we say, it's set Lou back. 
probably what, three fights, four fights two from where three. he is now. Two, two fights maybe. I d don't forget, he's had so many wins on the bounce and all of them have been finishes. Uh, that still counts. That still counts as far as I'm concerned. This is current record now. I think 15 and 5 now. Still a strong, very strong record. In, yeah, yeah. In, uh, the rest of Europe. So not a great night for Lou, obviously. Not a great night for friends of Lou. And uh, we are friends of Lou on this show, so it's it one great to watch. But after the break, we're going to talk about one of the hottest prospects in British MMA, Jack Shaw, and the rest of the Cage Warriors 86 card. Welcome back to part two. As we said before the break, we're going to talk about one of the hottest prospects in British MMA, Jack Shaw, and the rest of the Cage Warriors 86 card. Now let's get straight into it. So Rick, um, Jack Shaw fought um, a late replacement in Italian, um, Galbiati. Galbiati, I'll do. Yeah. I'll do. Um, again, it's not ideal. S same situation as Lou. It's not ideal to have a late replacement with your camp training for a specific kind of fighter. And Galbiati come to win and took Jack, first guy to take Jack into the third round. So what did you make of uh, Jack's performance? I thought it was great. I mean, so far in Jack's professional career, he's had it up his own way. He's been able to outgrapple his opponent, take him down, uh, get the submission or the, the ground and pound finish, you know. And for people who've never, who've only known Jack as a professional, <coughs> uh, I've only ever seen him do that. They probably think, oh, he's one-dimensional grappler. But then for the first time as a professional, we saw what he can do with his hands. We saw the, um, the ex-amateur boxing experience, the training he's done with Gary Lockett. He was mixing the shots up. He, he had great head movement, great footwork. Um, he was uh, outboxing his opponent. Well, not many people know that he, he actually won a Welsh Fest as an a amateur boxer. Yeah. And, um, like you say, he's never really shown, but his hands on Saturday, I thought, looked the best they've ever... It, it seemed to me that he was trying to prove that he could f fight on the feet. Yeah, he, you know, he, he, that's a, a good thing to say, I think, because um, he went for it, you know. Uh, he looked good doing it as well. Um, in the first round, he dropped his opponent with a nice hook, um, and that's obviously the training with Gary Locker come into play, you know, and... Um, in the third round, he got the finish with a nice knee to the chops. <laughs> and I don't know where he learned that from, but it was definitely weren't Gary Lockett. Um, I'm not saying Gary Lockett couldn't throw a knee if he wanted to. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he got the finish. It was a highlight reel finish. It went viral. People who don't even follow MMA have asked me about the finish, and they've obviously seen it. And it's a, a great exposure for him. Um with Jack, I don't know why, but every time I watch Jack, I'm slightly nervous. I don't know why, because he's, he's never done anything to make me think, oh, is he going to lose this? The one doubt I had was when he fought Commande. Yeah. And I thought, oh, maybe this is too early for him. Commande's fought reasonably high-level opponents. He's got a habit Great of beating shows. Welsh boys. So. Yes, yeah, he's been to Wales a few Good luck, times. Luckily, Lily. <laughs> he's been to Wales a few times and come away with a win. So I thought this might be slightly early, but... What do I know? Jack, like you say, he's, when it comes to wrestling, isn't, well, is there any prospects out there that are better than Jack at the moment? He can take them down and do what he chooses, basically. Well, um, Cage Warriors have obviously shown a lot of faith in Jack. Um, his next opponent, his seven wins, no defeats. Jack is six wins, no defeats. Cage Warriors are obviously backing him and sending him into Belgium against a Belgian who was also undefeated and um, they must have every confidence that he's going to get the job done. And he seems to be improving, like, like I said, his hands in this fight were brilliant. He looked like a boxer who had transitioned over to MMA rather than an all-round MMA guy. That's how good his hands were. Yeah. I can <coughs> see where his um, training with Jackson's come in as well. He was going for kicking the knees and stuff, you know, John Jones style. Yeah. So um, I can tell that he learned a lot when he went out to Albuquerque to 
was out there for a while. A good, a good yeah. four weeks, I think, with Marshmallow. Oh, yeah, I was so jealous watching the Snapchats <laughs> of him Chicken hanging man, out yeah. with all these fighters and that, you know. <coughs> but that's... Um, it's good, man. I've, se I've seen on social media since that fight, like you say, it went viral. And um, everyone's seen that. Cage Warriors, the actual Twitter, put that highlight out. And I've seen mentions of UFC now for Jack. So it's obviously caught on further afield than they normally normally does. But um, again, another standout performance. First time he's in the third round, there was no question of his cardio. It looked superb. He was still as strong in the third as he was in the first. And like you say, he pulled up the, the highlight reel knockout with a knee straight up the middle, like he'd been doing Muay Thai for forever. So yeah, yeah. is there any... Is there any limit to what Jack Shaw can do? What, how, how far do you think he can go? Is it a Cage Warriors world title uh, yeah. in, in the I think, near um, future? I think definitely. I'd, I'd like to see him clean up uh, domestically before going to the UFC. Uh, there are rumours that he's actually been approached by the UFC already and he's turned them down, which I think is very good. Risky. <laughs> no, but the thing is, you go to the UFC and and you, you lose your first two fights on the bounce and you weren't ready, You're out. you might, ne yeah, you might yeah. never get a call back again. But, but what I mean by risky is, turn it down now, when is the next one coming in? If he loses in Belgium, it's, it's he's still, that he's still of... He's still young, you know? Yeah, of course he is, yeah. So he's got all the time in the world. He's, I think he's 22 still. Um, he's got... He can do what he wants right now. If I was him, I'd win the Cage Warriors world title and then... And then UFC can't say no, and he will be ready then. We'll talk briefly about the rest of the card, because it was a stacked card and an entertaining one. Um, standout performance, other than Jack, for me, was Mason Jones, ex-boxer, um, ex-pro boxer. I think he was 3-0 pro boxer. Yeah, 3-0, yeah. <coughs> he's, he's gone over to, to MMA. Um, I think he's fighting a lightweight, 155 pounds. And he fought Sean Leather, I watched the whole fight and and I was entertained all the way through. I watched I watched Mason in pro boxing. I think I watched two of his fights. It was good, but I wasn't blown away. It's hard against some journeymen in pro boxing because they don't really come to have a yeah. fight. They just come to survive. But obviously, MMA is slightly different. Where every one one shot can change your thing. So it was a it was a good fight. Mason's hands looked superb. It looked like I say a boxer coming over. He looked great. But, <coughs> pardon the cough, um, what surprised me more than anything, you, you sort of half expect his hands to be good. What surprised me more than anything was his groundwork, his jiu-jitsu, and his submission attempts, which I was really impressed with. Well, as a pro boxer, he was always a high-level uh, judo player and uh, jiu-jitsu fighter as well, you know. So That's why we get him on, because you know these things. Yeah, he... he, um, <laughs> he he only did boxing to, to work on his hands. It was never the plan. Um, I was at the boxing event in Merthyr on Saturday and the gentleman said, hey, oh, Mason Jones going to our cage fighting. What a waste of talent. Uh, he should stick in a boxing ring. He could go really far. And I was like... Typical old-fashioned old opinion <laughs> that MMA isn't a sport. And uh, after seeing that, seeing that um, performance, I was like, no, nah, he made the right choice. It's where his... Passion is the same as Joe Duffy. Joe's a, a prodigy for MMA, and he he had a seven and zero boxing record after well, getting he, he fought in Swansea. Yeah, yeah, but now he's um, top level MMA fight in the UFC because he followed his passion. He could still be boxing now. He wouldn't have had the passion for it because he would have had one. His heart would have been in the cage, yeah. you know. And that's the same, I think, with uh, Mason Jones. So he's made the right choice. His, uh, like I say, his ground, ground game is what really impressed me. He took Leather down numerous times, and when they were on the floor, he was in charge. His transitions were really good. He had multiple submission attempts, and I'm um, speaking to someone who knows him. I know he was disappointed that two of the reunited chokes that he had sunk in, he let Leather slip out of, which, which is right you shouldn't really once it ended it they should be in and that should be it but third time lucky third round sank the rear naked in got the win i come away more of a believer than i was before oh yeah most definitely and um 
really impressed. Um, also on the card, Chris Edwards. Uh, he won also by Rear Naked Shark. And <laughs> I've known Chris a long time, and you know he's that typical ADHD, like naughty little schoolboy, you know. And um, he, the guy had him in the headlock, and he, he kind of slipped out the back after securing the body triangle. And it was like it was typical Chris Edwards, cheeky little scamp <laughs> going for the, you know, you could see him sort of laughing when he was doing it. And it's like, oh, I, I was glad to see Chris Edwards back. You know, I've been a fan of him for a long time. And um, I've seen a win like that. I've seen Chris fight maybe twice. One thing I picked up off Chris, he comes to fight. Yeah. There's no, there's no um, half measures. He's in a fight. Um, before we go to the break, other notable wins. Um, was it? Craig White. Craig White, yeah, he got the win Matt over Inman. Matt Inman. Big win. And I think, yeah, that's a big win for Craig. He's half Welsh, by the way. Um, this will put him in title contention now for the Cage Warriors welterweight title. I mean, Lou's obviously taking a step back. I think Craig's the main guy now. Yeah, so it was a big win for him against an established name in Matt Inman. Inman. And uh, another impressive win for Aidan Lee. Thought that was a that was a good reunited choke sort of face crush. So all in all, great night, great entertainment of Cage Warriors '86. Um, so we wrap that section of the show up. Cage Warriors '86. After the break, special guest view. We've got headliner of Mirth a Boxing Show from the past Saturday. Gavin Gwynn joining us on the sofa. See you in five. <laughs> Back to part three. This past Saturday, Sanaga Promotions put on another cracking boxing show in Merthyr. Riedekar? Is that how I pronounce it? Riedekar Leisure Centre. Yes, got it this time. Riedekar Leisure Centre. Headlining, Gavin Gwynn. Light, professional lightweight, undefeated. Pleased to say he joins us on the sofa. Thanks for coming on, Gav. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much for um, inviting me. No, not a problem at all. Like I said, headlined. Your first show uh, this past Saturday yeah. against um, tough, tough journeyman, Fons Alexander. Yeah, yeah. Originally, it was supposed to be for a Welsh, the Welsh lightweight title, yeah? Yeah, against yeah. Against Henry James. Yeah. Unfortunately, Henry picked up an injury in camp. Is that right? Yeah, it was a, it was a cut, it was. Um, uh, Henry messaged me on Facebook, like, I, like, um, I don't dislike Henry, like, but so we get on, like, sort of, just speak sort of thing. So he messaged me himself and sent me a photo of his nose. It was, um, well, it peeled back, his nose is peeled back, so I don't know what happened. He didn't say, are we done it or anything like that, like, who done it, but, um, yeah. So, so like he was there peeling potatoes and they went. That's what it looked like, man. It, 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 well, it was peeled back, that's, uh, that's all I can explain it. Like, Most it of my uh, lacerations have come from peeling potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I just buy oven chips. <laughs> it must have been, obviously, a big blow. Yeah, it was, massive blow to Horses me. are out. Yeah. Everyone's excited because there's been a bit of a buzz about you for a while. Um, like I said, you're undefeated. Can he, well, you're now 7-0, is that correct? Yeah, 7-0, yeah. 7-0, yeah. and, 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 and I've seen majority of your fights and, and you've looked impressive in all of them. You, you've got great feet, hand speeds, top notch. Thank you. So obviously, <laughs> obviously it was a, a big disappointment. Was it, was yeah. it hard to pick yourself back up then? Um... I didn't know about it for the first couple of days because they brought sparring in for me. So they didn't want to let me know just to dishearten me and I wouldn't turn up for sparring and thought the show, whole show was off. So um, they didn't tell me till all the sparring was finished. Then they told me a couple of days later and then I was like, oh, didn't know what to do. So I went home, had a pizza. I thought, well, I, well, I thought oh, the fight's going to be off. But um, they ring me a day, a day later then. They said, oh, we get, we, you're still going to headline the show. Um, might be for a national title, uh, still over 10 rounds, but we can see what we can do. And I said, um, I just want a, a good, decent fight. If I'm going to headline the show, I just want a good, decent fight. So uh, the fans, again, their money's worth. like so, And that's what they've done there. And they brought in uh, Fonz. In Fonz, that's the thing with Fonz. You, you've obviously seen yeah, Fonz yeah. Alexander while you MC and on the country. I've seen him a few times. Yeah. Although... Like I say, he's, he's classed as a journeyman. He's a tough, tough man, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's better than his record suggests. I mean, and, you know, you've 
I've seen him pick up many upsets on the road, uh, especially when he knocked out Joe Jones in. Yeah, that was a bad, yeah. bad knock. Yeah, that was yeah. bad. Um, so, like you say, you wanted a good tough fight. Yeah. For eight rounds, your yeah. first eight rounder. Yeah. I think I needed it as well, because these boys have just been well. It's been easy for me. I've had harder sparring like in the gym. So. Uh, well, Do you on, know what? Um, when you fought Ibra Reyes on the uh, Cyclone show, yeah. Um, I've emceed a couple of Ibra Reyes' fights since then, and he he give the, his opponents a real, real tough time, even knocking one one guy out yeah. cold. Um, you, Ibra you just... Reyes, Ibra Reyes had a draw with Richie Cannon, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he does. And they, count they, 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 they're a weight above me. I'm lightweight. I, I got a, I got a box these journeymen at light welter because there's no lightweights that want to fight me. I've, yeah. uh, when I fought on the Cyclone promotion show, um, the the guy who sorts all the um, fights out even said to me, he said, no one wants to fight you at lightweight. So I don't know why that is. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Like, so. They're moms. <laughs> I, yeah, it's because I'm so tall, probably. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, yeah, Fon's, it's great that Fon stepped in. Yeah, definitely. Sure yeah, yeah. Sure this. And he's the type of guy that will give you a fight. He's, yeah. like you say, he knocked out Joe Jones. He's he's dropped Kyle Jones. Yeah. yeah. Um, in a great fight that was, in all fairness. Over, yeah. I think it was only over four. Um, this is your this was your first eight rounder. Yeah, first eight rounder. And that's a good thing with Fonz that you know. Yeah, it it's was... not going to go out easy, and you're probably going to get rounds in. You spoke into yeah. lovely black eyes. Yeah. So you obviously, you obviously. Yeah, got yeah. A, bit of a fight. Yeah, he caught me with a couple of good shots, but. Um... The game plan was just to get the rounds in. Don't take him out. Obviously, if 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 I hurt him with a, with a like a good good shot, try and take him out then. But if not, just get the rounds in, and then we go from here. So. Do you know what's impressed me most about your career so far? You you turned pro a little over a year ago. Yeah, just over a year. Um, yeah. You haven't been messing around. No. Um, life hasn't got in the way of your career uh, in that time. You've turned pro, you've uh, had a baby. That's enough for people to take a hiatus and, and not compete as often. Yeah. But you've had seven fights? Seven fights in, in, I think it's 18 months. In 18 months, so, you know, a lot of boxers who've been active for three years haven't had that many no. fights. But yet, and they're still having four rounders. You've stepped from six, up to six rounds then to eight rounders, and you're looking to to get your first 10 rounder in um, shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why there's a buzz about you because you seem like a kind of guy who wants it. Would you say that's so? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I 100% want it. Um, that's all I think about. That's all I think about. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, they keep me so busy because I'm constantly in the gym. I'm there every day. I'm a gym rat. Like, I love it. If I'm not in the gym, I, I, well, I don't know where else I'd be like. Do you know what I mean? I um I seen a I think it was on boxingwheels.com an interview with yourself after after the fight on Saturday. Yeah. Where you said actually the cancellation of the title fight could be a good thing because yeah. now you've got eight rounds under your belt. You know yeah. you can do eight rounds with a tough guy. Yeah. And obviously the title fight will be over ten. Yeah. Only another two. So yeah, like you say, you put a positive spin on it that you know you can do eight rounds. How, how yeah. did you feel? How, how I felt I felt sound like I got to six rounds and um, I was in the corner and Tony said, how do you feel? How's your, how's your wind? And I said, well, I, I feel sound. I could, I'll, I'll, I'll step it on him a bit, you know, and that's what i done on the seventh round and I stepped it up a bit. So the, the extra two rounds, I don't think it's going to phase me. No. Um, what I will say is, how do you, how do you think your nerves, with it being a title fight and over 10. Yeah. Obviously, um, you're going to be nervous. You're nervous for every fight I expect. That's, that's totally normal. Yeah, but yeah. That could play a slight part, do you think? Um, no, not really. You seem pretty relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get nervous. Well, I'm in the changing rooms and I'm, I'm thinking another 10 minutes beer and I'm just going to pack up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel, but... <laughs> um, you got people around you who just calm you down, tell you um, tell you what you want to hear, and then you just get the get the job done. Then got to get the gloves on, get in there and get it done. You mentioned obviously you train a Tony Borg. Yeah. Got a team, uh, a Jim McKellar is up there. What's it like to be training with world champions, British champions, day in day out? Uh, and how do you feel? Eighteen months you said you've been a pro. Yeah. 
from from day one to now, how much have they all helped bring you on? Well, that's why I think I've been so fast tracked into a title shot because I've been having these like well, gym wars. Yeah, I've been there for yeah. They are absolutely like, unless, and and that, shows. unless um, you're at a certain level, um, you won't cut it for the sparring in the gym because it's it is ruthless in the gym. Like it's um, well, some sometimes we do like seven minute round sparring and. Yeah, it's um, it is ruthless. Like you got boys coming down from England, like all different level um, fighters. You got uh, European level fighters, world class fighters coming down to our gym for the sparring. So you've got to be on your A game every time you go to the gym. Yeah, well, if in case people don't know who is in your gym, you got people like Lee Selby, Andrew yep. Selby, Craig Evans, just to name a few. Dale Evans when he was there. Dale Evans, yeah. Um, Mitchell Buckland. Um, uh, just joined uh, Lance Cooksey as well. Gary Buckland, when he comes. When down, he was, yeah, 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 when he when he was boxing, Gary Buckland. Um, the list. Had some, had some good spars with Gary Buckland. <laughs> if they were on film, Jesus. I've seen Gary spar, yeah. and he sparred like seven rounds uh, before Tony noticed he didn't even have a gum shield in. <laughs> he just, <laughs> yeah. just gets in and. It was not no head, no head guard, no groin guard, no gum shield. Just get in there, and he wouldn't even be fit. Like, and he'd do eight rounds straight off you, non-stop. Thinking what? I've seen, I've seen the sparring, and, and like you say, you've got to be at a certain level to, you have, be, yeah. to survive yeah, there. Be. I've um, seen him out in flares in in Cardiff, like dancing non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's Gary Buckland, and, and he, he's going for it on that dance floor. That guy can move. <laughs> Work. Um, like you say, you headline Merthyr. Yeah. The there were other other fights on the card, obviously. Um some some real good class sort of fighters as well. The standout one for me was Olympic silver medalist Fred Evans. Also from my gym as well. So. Who was do you know the original opponent for the Fred? The original was uh William Bo- yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, he yeah. William <coughs> fought a week earlier in a fight in Manchester I was the MC for, and uh he had an absolute Tear up, yeah. I'll send you the link. Hell of a war. He got cut all over his face. Dropped the guy twice in the first That's round. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've heard about that. Decision. So there was no way he's going to be ready a week later for someone like Fred Evans. And that's a, that's a. Fred was one and all before Saturday. Yeah. That's a perfect kind of fight because William is, is that guy who will will put up a yeah, war. But, yeah. but Fred come away with the win against yeah. uh, Victor Dago. Ed, that? Ed, Edgarha. Edgarha. He was the MC on the show, yeah. so that's why I asked. But after the break, we'd also talk to Gavin, who's got a pretty big announcement to make. See you after this. Welcome back to part four, Talking Heavy. As we said before the break, Gavin's got a bit of an announcement, so straight over to you, Gav. What's yeah. What's happening? I'll be... Um... Boxing for the Welsh title on the 9th of December against Henry Jeans. So the rearranged fight. Yeah, it's back on. Diary. Is there a venue booked yet? Um, The Newport... Newport oh, Centre, nice. yeah. Newport Centre, yeah. Newport Centre. Where, where the Cage Warriors uh, last Saturday was. What's the, what's the rough... Um, you've MC there, number it's, 10. What's uh, the rough uh, capacity? Full capacity is 2,000, I think. Nice. And so. you've got a... One thing you have got is a big following. Yeah, That's yeah. That's one thing I notice on social media and, and being at the fights. You've got a good following, so you expect to sell or take a lot of fans up with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably over 200 to 300 fans. Like, so it's a lot. Obviously, I'll pay, I'll pay some of the, the bus fare so everyone doesn't have to go to pocket for the, the buses and everything else. Like, like, I've done a couple of times as well. Like, so Because um, I know the tickets are pretty expensive, like 35 quid. Some people... Um, only earn like two hundred pound a week. By the time they pay their rent, their food, they haven't got much money left over. Like last time, I give away two free tickets, and um, lucky enough, they went to a girl I know from Chilliwis, and she was having a kind of a bad week, and she found out she won um, two tickets, and then she was over the moon. Like so, See, you've got a, a big presence on social media, and and you're a likable, you're a likable kind of guy. So that that's only gonna go go well for you in the future. Um, with this title fight, December the 9th, you said? 9th, yeah. December the 9th. We're at the end of October now, so when when does your camp start? Are you, um, you going to have a couple of weeks off after the last fight? And No, I just just a few days I've had off. I'm going to have a couple of, uh, I'd say a week, and then straight back in the gym, man. 
And camp starts from probably last week of October or so, yeah? Yeah, probably, yeah. Right. Um, about your opponent, Henry James, Ricky is obviously, obviously more of a more up the scratch on, on Henry than I am, but he's, he's one of these guys that I first clocked him on uh, Boxing Wales Twitter posts. Yeah. That he was boxing in like Plymouth and stuff and picking up a draw, picking up a win, and he's been on a, a massive resurgence of late, so yeah. hence the title, the title shot. So tell us more about uh, Henry. Basically, um, I mean, I've only been around the Welsh boxing for the last five years. Um, so I was down in Torquay, MC in a fight, local guy fighting, comes out with all these sparkly shorts and the, the vest and all, all, sold all these tickets. And in the opposite corner, you had a guy called Henry James from Wales. I'd never heard of him. Um, yeah, your typical Lonsdale, dirty white, sports, sports direct, direct <laughs> journeyman shorts, you know? And I was like, oh, I think gonna last long. He, you know, he doesn't look like much. And Henry absolutely blitzed the guy, won every single round. Um, and beat the homeboy, and he was undefeated 5-0 and before he fought Henry, and he just kept on beating these local guys uh, when he was the away fighter, and, and even he stepped up and fought um, people who fought for British titles and, and taken them the distance and, and stole a couple of rounds off him too, and I'm thinking, this guy needs a Welsh title shot. He's definitely earned it. I mean, he, I, think he's, I think he's won six, seven of his last, like, eight fights or something like that, you know. All on the road as well. All on the road. It'd be nice for him at probably the end of his career, that he's been around a long time, um, to get a Welsh title shot. He is up against Double G Gavin Gwynno, so he's got a, a long night ahead of him. So you better train hard, you know what I'm saying? What, Dad? Uh, do, do you know much about Henry? Do you, have you watched a couple of his fights? Do you know I, what he brings? I've done loads of rounds with him sparring. Um, you have, yeah? Yeah, when I was amateur, I always used to train up um, <laughs> Geoffrey Gear Gym and Die Gardeners. Um, so I've, I sparred him, but when I sparred him was when he first come back. So obviously he's going to be a lot different from when I sparred him, but I know what he's about. Yeah. I, 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 I got a game plan, and um, I think it's going to be pulled off pretty um pretty well come did, fight night. Something. I, I didn't know that you knew each other that well which yeah obviously adds a bit more a bit more spice to the yeah we had a we had a we had a chat up on the Merthyr show before I fought like so oh you come up to watch yeah we we, we get on like it's it's just a sport it's a fight at the end of the day like I think it's going to be um I think it's going to be some fight though I think it'll um t it, I think it'll be another Lanchi and uh Tony Pace fight if that's uh, a big statement uh, people talk about that fight like like it was like Battle of the Titans, you know, so... Some fight, that was probably one of the best fights I've seen live. So, with you knowing Henry like you do, which is yeah. a bit of a surprise to me, can we expect a bit of, um, bit of not not bad blood, but a bit of social media jibing and, and jabbing him and um, trying to get a bit of... Um, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy, I'd rather let my fist do the talking and then people can talk about it after then, do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's got all the ingredients. Especially now you say you know each other yeah. that well and you've sparred before, but like you say, you sparred him when he was on his comeback. Yeah, he was a lot heavier then. He was probably 12, 13 stone, like, so he's, he was probably a lot slower as well. I'm not, I haven't seen him in the gym since he's come back. How many and years dropped. are we talking? Since um, only a year, but the last year, like. So just turned pro, probably. Just turned pro, yeah. So you've come on a lot. You've improved a lot yeah. since then as yeah. well, so. Yeah. It's got all the ingredients of a cracker, I think, and that's the same with the ninth in Newport, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So, assuming you're going to win, which obviously you think you will, and yeah, and you I take the every title, to myself, yeah. there's, it isn't huge depth in the lightweight division in Wales, but there are fighters out there that, if you've got the belt, you, once you pick that belt up, you're going to have a target on your back, basically. You're the big fight for the guys then. There are a couple of fighters around the area. Um, obviously, you all know each other. Yeah. So we're going to go through a couple of names and we're going to have a quick chat and see what um, they, they have to offer and if, if you think they'll ever fight Gavin should he win the belt. So, first one is, is your favourite name? Callum. Buzzy Teal. <laughs> Buzzy Teal. He's, obviously, he's 2-0 and at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's very early on for Callum, but should he continue? Uh, being unbeaten and going the way he's going. He's fighting, I think, um, next week. 
He's fighting this weekend this week. in uh, in Belfast on the Matchroom card. He's fighting as the away fighter against a guy who's undefeated six and zero. So you know it's going to be quite a big step up for him. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a four rounder or a six rounder, but if it's a, if it is a six rounder and he gets through it all right, then once you've had a six rounder, that's that means you're eligible to fight for an area <laughs> title such as the Welsh. So he could be in the picture after his next fight. I mean, if he beats a six and zero guy, that that's it. That's him right up there. That's him knocking on the winner of Gavin and Henry's door. Yeah, normally we wouldn't we wouldn't really consider a guy who's two and zero. No. But because the division hasn't got a lot of depth in, no. everyone on that list mm. is going to be considered a potential opponent for yeah, yourself. Yeah, of course, course it is. Because when you win the title, you're obviously going to want to defend it. You're yeah, and, just... it, and everyone wants it as well, doesn't it? Everyone yeah. wants a Welsh title. Exactly. So, yeah. It's last few years, I think it's picked up a little and got a bit more prestigious and people actually want the belt. Now, when you, yeah. start, when you turn pro, I spoke to a lot of, of guys turning over and that's the first thing I spoke to Garen Goodridge. Um, on Sunday, yeah. First thing he said, if I can win it, I won a Welsh title, and this it's nice to see. There are other guys in the division. Um, obviously, the big name, along with yourself, is Zach Davis. Yeah, <coughs> he's been a bit inactive of late. Zach's had um, trouble with his promotion. He was, he was he signed to Frank Warren, and then I don't know what happened there, but. It's affected his career. Now he's signed with uh, Mo Pryor a lot and Mo Pryor's lot, and hopefully, see him back on track. I mean, summer next year. I'd love to see the Welsh money fight in the lightweight division. Gavin Gwynn versus Zach Davis. I mean, that that is a big one. That's that's that's, a, one. that's an headline fight right there. Both both such nice humble guys, you know, as well. Like they're both so. You know, you can't. You could, it'd be a lot of people there, and it'd be a big crowd, but you wouldn't get crowd trouble. There. No, it won't be. It'd be, it'd be a great so atmosphere. Imagine. Like, um, I think me and Zach are on as well. Like, I, we fought in the amateurs. He had the nod. Um, it was my first um, open class championships, and I got the semi-finals, and I got beat, beat by Zach. But a few people thought I, 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 I should add the nod. So we've sparred like like a few times as well like so we've been to each other's gyms and we know each other so but I, I don't think he'll get down to lightweight now no I don't I think he'll stay at the light uh light welterweight division there are a couple of other names we've got Christian Tools who are who's thinking about dropping down a division and um obviously Henry we are fighting on um December yeah. the 9th so before we wrap it up just wish you all the best thanks for coming on thank Gav. you very much all cheers best. boys congratulations thank you. on your win and thank you December the 9th Newport Leisure Centre, Gavin Gwynn, Henry Jeans, Welsh lightweight title. If you want any tickets, you can hit Gavin up. You can contact any of us and we'll put you in contact if you can't find Gavin, but you will. He's on Facebook, Twitter, he's on the lot. So that's December the 9th. Snapchat. This is, yeah, Snapchat. <laughs> it's all it's all so, um, Tinder. <laughs> no. Nah, he's got a girlfriend. Apologies. So, <laughs> Tinder. So, yeah, if you want anything any tickets it's going to be a cracker it's got all the ingredients hit him up this um oh before we go ricky thanks for stepping in for lily no problem anytime um it's been a pleasure and this is i think it's episode two of um talking heavy so hope you enjoyed and uh, see you soon